Hey guys, welcome to this first video of the content creation module. In this video, we are going to learn how to brainstorm content that performs very well in search engines, not in social media, but mostly in search engines, uh, and how to, you know, figure out what to write about on your site so that you get more search traffic. So before we get started, I actually want to show you uh, the search traffic on Authority Hacker, where I am almost exclusively using that tactic now to grow the content. And you can see that actually our search traffic is gradually growing and doing pretty well. Uh, obviously, I would not attribute the success just to that one tactic, but that's definitely a part of it. So how do, so how do we do that? The first thing we need to do is we need to create what I call a bucket of ideas. And the way we find these ideas, and that's the file I use on Authority Hacker, the way we find these ideas is we find a list of the competitors that are in our niche and just produce a lot of content as well and are within our domain authority range. So usually domain authority is a metric by Moz uh, and it's just like it's a replacement for PageRank. It's basically the interpretation of PageRank because PageRank is not updated anymore. So I try to find people that are plus minus 10 domain authority than me, sometimes a little bit more. So authority hacker is 34. So you can see I actually go up to like 57 or something. Um, so I got a little bit more, but not not a lot. I try to not pick like domain authority 80 site. I'm trying to pick people who are within an arm reach of me. And the way I find, and after I find these people, sorry, I actually reverse engineer their best pieces of content. And for this, I use Ahrefs, which we're going to use in this tutorial. And with Ahrefs, you're able to plug a domain and it's going to show you the best performing pages in search which keywords they rank for, and uh, it allows you to essentially write about the same topic, try to do it better, uh, and try to get some of their links as well. So that's essentially the tactic we're gonna do there, and what we're gonna do in this lesson is we're gonna create a file like that where you actually collect uh, the, the competitors, and we're gonna see how to find them. Then you go through them and you find uh, ideas with main keywords, so these are like keywords that could be targeting an authority hacker, and then actually I have URLs to my editorial calendar, which is going to be in the lesson after this one uh, uh, that, you know, where I actually pick that topic and I'm going to write a piece about that. So I'm able to actually schedule and organize all my content based on reverse engineering competitors. And then I like to also look at, um, at the products that my competitors promote, because like as you do that research, you're going to be browsing the site, you're going to check it out, and eventually you'll find things like affiliate offers or just products they are promoting. And it's a good way to, you know, think about your monetization, not just traffic, when you do that kind of like content research. So let's get started. And the first thing we want to do is you actually have a link to that empty spreadsheet, which is exactly the same spreadsheet, just empty here. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually going to delete that part because you shouldn't have that. Uh, and you're going to want to make a copy. So to make a copy on your own account, you need to be logged into any Gmail account or any Google Apps account. Click on File, and then you click Make a Copy, and then you can, uh, once you make a copy, it will be on your own account, and you'll be able to edit it. Otherwise, you won't be able to edit it. So make a copy before you get started. Once you have made a copy, uh, we need to find a list of competitors. How do I find a list of competitors? Uh, the first method that I like to use uh, and for some reason, I actually have it on here already, but it's, I like to use the related query. So I'm going to do it for Authority Hacker, actually, because uh, I've done it before and I know it's going to be easier. So authorityhacker.com, if I write it properly. And you can see that when I type relatedauthorityhacker.com, I don't get a lot of results. I get like 10 results. But these sites are fairly related to me. They are not like, it's not searching that keyword in Google. It's Google telling me, hey, I think these sites are somewhat close to what you're doing. And if I open this one, then it's like how to build an authority site or blog. And it seems to be fairly related. So that's pretty interesting. Now, what we want is we want to know, you know, how authoritative these domains are so that we can pick people who are not too strong for us, but not too weak as well. So I like to uh, use the Moz bar and you have a link at the bottom of that video as well. And when you use that Moz bar, it gives you the domain authority of the domain. So for example, these guys are 24, I'm 34. So yeah, if they rank for something, I definitely can rank for it as well. Uh, let me just pick another one. Content champion, Laz, I know you're in the membership, so hi. Uh, Con Champion is Domain Authority 32, so it's a pretty good one to look at as well. And uh, Clamber seems pretty good as well, Domain Authority 26. Uh, so, uh, no, sorry, Domain Authority 38, so a little bit more than us. 
uh, and also I think a blog. So if I look at this site, you know, this is about authority sites. This one is like an interview of Brian Dean about building authority sites, but Content Champion in general is about that. And then Clamber uh, is also a blog, so it has a lot of uh, content. So that's perfect. So I definitely want these three into my competitors list. So what I would do is I would grab them uh, and go in my spreadsheet and put them here and then check the domain authority as well. So domain authority here is 24. Uh, then content champion is 32. It's not that difficult. And clamber is 38. All within my reach because I'm 34, I think. Um, so that's, that's perfect. Now, you know, that, that might be just it when you're doing your related search. And so what you can do is you can actually take these domains and do the same thing with them. So you can just do related clamber and you can see that I'm getting a bunch of other domains, but some of them are really strong. 72, 81, uh, that's a little, little too strong for me. Uh, 56, I could start looking at it maybe. <laughs> so point blank SEO is a pretty good link full. Uh, that looks interesting, uh, that kind of stuff. So it's pretty easy for you to just scan through and find these sites using the related query. Now, if that's not enough, if you are not able to find enough competitors, what I like to do is I like to use this related plugin in Chrome that allows me to find quote unquote similar pages to this page. And it's a little bit similar, but you will get slightly different results. So for example, Link Assistant seems interesting. I have no idea what their domain authority is, but I know they produce a bunch of content. Uh, SEO power is pretty strong. So yeah, domain authority 71, that's a little too much. So let's get back to Clamber and you would be probably able to find some of these, although this extension tends to find a little bit stronger domains. Uh, it's like it's these big authority sites, but like, I mean, point blank is 56. I think I could take it if I created better content and actually I took them on the bus stream review. So. Um, yeah, I think I could definitely put point blank SEO into my list. And then when I add them, I can then do a, another search for them, etc. So I could keep going all the way. Now, since I said earlier, we're going to use Ahrefs. Uh, and Ahrefs is not a cheap tool. Ahrefs in a version that we need to use uh, for this tutorial is costs $174 per month, I think. Anyway, it's not cheap. Um, but the thing is, it's absolutely needed. And if you're gonna spend a lot of time on uh, re you know, preparing your content and it's gonna cost you a lot of time and money anyway, time or money, you definitely want to have the right information out there. And this tutorial allows you to do that. So if you are really, really, really tight on budget and this is expensive, I recommend you either share the subscription with someone or you just brainstorm content for a whole year and just by one month and then just cut it. But you will absolutely need Ahrefs for this tutorial and there is many, many ways to get it without, you know, having to pay the full price yourself. Uh, try to make friends, maybe ask on the Facebook group as well. There is many ways to do that. So anyway, if you put your domain in Ahrefs, which you can, it actually shows you a bunch of competitors as well. So you are actually able to look at, you know, something like this, like Income Diary looks like uh, someone I should definitely look, in, look at. The authority 60 is a little bit strong, but maybe something like authority website income would be a good one. John have a domain authority 35. That's perfect. I could definitely add it. And once I find another competitor, I can run my related searches, etc., as well. So I could just keep adding stuff and I would recommend that you get up to 30 to 50 uh, domains in there. You really want quite a bit so that you can run a lot of research especially if you're gonna be brainstorming an entire year of content, obviously depending on how often you post, that could be, uh, you know, that could be 50 pieces of content if you post once a week, or that could be, you know, 200 if you post four a week, so it really depends. But I would recommend you get 30 to 50 inside that competitors list. So I'm not gonna do 30 to 50 here because that would be very long and that video is already pretty long and we have a lot of stuff to do still. So once we have uh, a list of competitors, and obviously I only have five here, but you should probably spend a few hours building a list of uh, 30 to 50, as I said earlier. You take one of the URLs, and Lars, I'm gonna take your URL here, and you go into Ahrefs, and into Ahrefs, um, you can go into Position Explorer, which you only have in the standard plan, and then drop the URL there. And what Ahrefs is gonna do is it's gonna find all the keywords this uh, site ranks for. And if I go in top pages, 
it actually sorts all these keywords per page. So I can actually see which content ranks for which keyword. It gives me an idea of how much traffic that content gets. And as a result, I will be able to see the best pages in uh, the domain. So for example, uh, on Content Champion, probably one of the best traffic earning page is the writing Amazon product reviews. It's something that seems to be doing pretty well for them in search. And I can tell that it ranks for how to write a product review. Number two, it ranks for write product reviews, number one, etc. And I have the search volumes here, which, you know, 170 doesn't sound impressive. However, um, you know, it actually ranks for a lot of long tail keywords. And the real power of the Ahrefs tool is that it actually figures out, even if, it, if the page ranks for a lot of long tail keywords, it figures out which one has the most traffic using this number here. So. Uh, if I was doing keyword research for Adore Hacker, I would probably put that in my spreadsheet. So I would just go in my reverse engineering and I would go in my second tab in content ideas. And then I would just put the URL here and the main keyword is how to write Amazon, how to write product reviews, sorry, product reviews. And then in own competing URL, uh, I'm gonna put the URL on my content calendar when I get to that later so that I can tell that I've been covering that keyword and I don't get back to it later. And so if I go back to Ahrefs, I am able to literally go through the whole domain. So I can see that this music video one ranks for inspirational music videos, uplifting music videos, which uh, is okay, but it's probably not something I would want on Authority Hacker. So I would probably just skip it. And you don't have to take all the ideas. Obviously you need to use your brain a little bit to figure out what would, you know, what kind of content could I, you could actually see on your site. Um, building authority sites though is an interesting one. So it ranks for authority sites number five, but actually in my case, uh, I'm pretty sure we rank, uh, we rank up there, we're gonna rank number two. So there, there would be no point for us going after that keyword. So I would keep going and I would basically do that for every single site, competitor site that I got. So in that case, uh, LinkedIn for leads, but actually does not rank for LinkedIn for leads. So maybe that keyword is too competitive uh, and reverse engineering your competitors does just that. I can take that. I can tell, sorry, that this piece of content is tried to rank for LinkedIn for leads, uh, which is probably a keyword with decent search volume. But the truth is it doesn't rank for it. And Ahrefs would have found out if it ranked for it. And so by looking at my competitors rather than just looking at keywords, I'm able to tell, hey, content champion is around the same domain authority as me and does not rank for that keyword. Therefore, I should probably not go for that keyword. And that allows me to just avoid it and just keep going and figure out you know, what works uh, for them. In this case, I would probably uh, go up until there's like something above three in terms of traffic. So I would probably stop here. Um, so maybe like traffic tactics, this one is interesting, but same here, it ranks for someone's name. So maybe not the best one. Uh, and this one, this all these just rank for people's names, so not the best ones. So basically I would just keep going and let me actually just keep going a little bit so that you get a better idea. Let me just take point blank SEO. I know these guys will probably have some interesting content that rank. Uh, and I'm not literally doing it live. I don't think I've done point blank SEO before. Um, so let's just check it out, do it again. Uh, check their top pages. I like to do it per page because, you know, many pages will rank for a lot of long tail keywords and it just makes more sense to check per page. So uh, Ahrefs is a little bit slow, but it's gonna get there. And obviously the link building strategies post ranks for link building number four, uh, link building strategy number one. These are great keywords, but if you check that page, that's a huge page actually. It's like, uh, there's a lot of content here. So if I wanted to compete here, I would definitely need to spend a lot of time and energy to go after that keyword. So uh, I can put it in there, but I need to know that I'm going to have to put a hell of a lot of effort into that content if I want to top it up. Like you always want to do better content. Otherwise you probably won't do as well as them uh, if you don't really go nuts. And he's gone pretty nuts, uh, John Cooper on this one. So to, to actually top this up, that'll be quite a bit of work. So I could still put it in there, but I need to know that it's going to be a lot of work. Um, so I'm going to put it here. And I'll just put link building strategies. Um, and yeah, and if you wanted, you could add something like big content and then you could put a yes here. Like I'm not putting it because it's not applicable to every niche, but in that case, I would definitely do that. And then I would keep going. So that's basically how you make your list 
of content. And what I recommend is that you actually make a list of at least 50 content ideas like I've done on this spreadsheet. I've gone like 57. So, uh, so that when you have to fill in your content calendar, when you're like, hey, what do I write about? It's very easy to just go back and know that, well, all these topics are topics that your competitors with the same SEO metrics as you rank for that you can pick and just figure out, you know, something cool to write about. And then you can get back to the URL and you can uh, look how much work that would be to create something better. So in that case, you know, on page SEO, uh, that's, that's uh, you know, it's not that competitive. But I know it ranks for uh, keyword optimization and keyword optimization has search volume. So I know if I do something better and I'm able to build a few links to it, I will get traffic um, pretty much guaranteed. So that's it for this lesson. That's how we brainstorm things. And then, as I said, if you find uh, ways people monetize, you can actually add it in your tab. So like, for example, Nick has a keyword research course, which is his own course. But, uh, you know, I create training courses as well. You're watching one right now. Uh, so I would probably just go and write, you know, that I could do a keyword research course. So that later on I can just go back when I think about monetizing my content and I can just link it back to it. So that's basically the spreadsheet. I recommend you get at least 50 ideas and then jump on the next lesson. So I'll see you in the next lesson, guys. Have a good day.